What up, guys? I'm Tahir Moore. And I'm Patrick Cloud. And this is another episode of Damn Internet, You Scary! What's on the What's on the bill today? Ooh, man. Yeah, we've been coming with some heat. Yeah, we have. Uh, uh, pop Electronic? Pop Electronic? Yeah. I'm not familiar. Like a lot of synthesizers, laser sound, stuff like that? Uh, Daft Punk kind of feel. Oh, like Daft Punk? Yeah. What can I rip off? All right, I'll do the beat. Okay, let's do it. All right. I, I basically said I wasn't familiar. It seemed like we were pretty familiar, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know, here we are. Welcome back to another What's episode, man. What's going on, guys? So, uh, big shout out to all the people that put in their pre-orders for shirt shows will be shipped out. Uh, mm-hmm. Super excited about that. Uh, when they do come to you, don't be surprised they won't have the end on there. Uh, this was just a mock order right now, so it has the end. But when you get to a shirt, it will not have the end on there because it'll it's be endless, endless, like, endless pleasure, like possibilities. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. That didn't shout out to all our Patreon subscribers, hey. man. Uh, definitely appreciate you guys. You guys keep us in the business of podcasting. Uh, if it was not for you guys, I'd be working at Target. Pat would probably be at Best Buy. Like, Skid Row. Yeah. <laughs> That's skin roll. Getting my, <laughs> getting my fix. So thank you guys for keeping us off the streets. Absolutely. And supporting <laughs> us and giving us the ability to give you another podcast. Again, we have a $5 level, a $10 level. Both of them come with their own uh, special perks. Uh, but you don't have to be limited to that. If you want to give more, you absolutely can. We are not going to tell you no. Shout out to my boy, Awa. Right. He definitely gave a $20 subscription, man. I cannot thank you enough. Awa, 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 Awa. <laughs> Big shout, shout out, out to my to man. Alan. He's also the creator of this dope app called uh, Grapevine, which is like um, if uh, Eventbrite mate, met fe- Facebook. So Eventbrite and Facebook put together, you can post pictures and stuff like that. And ah. Keep it going after the event. Uh, it's minority owned and based, and it's just super dope. So shout out to Awa for I creating something dope too. Awa, Awa, Awa. <laughs> what country is that from? What, Awa? Awa, yeah. Uh, is that African? It is, but he's also like, I feel like kind of. British too, because he kind of has an accent. And he says "mate" a lot. I was one of my friends. Oh. I was talking about that, like, like, you know, you go to somebody's house and they, they got something. Like, it don't matter. Like, a house as nice as this, mm-hmm. you got something in the house from uh, IKEA, like mm-hmm. something like the the draw liner or the utensil holder, something like right. that. Awa has nothing from IKEA in his house. It's just all from ancient Africa, bro. It's all from like black and white and anthropology. <laughs> Like, oh, <laughs> first of all, I don't even know what black and white is. That's how I know, black and white is at. actually a clothing store. I didn't mean to say black and white, but I meant oh. to say anthropology and some other fancy furniture decor store. Like he, Ooh. like you walk in. First of all, he's like on a twenty eighth level dope loft, mm-hmm. grand piano in the living room. Nice. Yeah, you know, he got I windows that open at the. <laughs> Dude, you always go with the. <laughs> I see you. I want. I want. So big shout out to Owl Man for That's supporting, tight. man. That was dope, man. I was like, he said, he's like, yo. And he was trying to buy a shirt before the last day of shirts. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I'm in Australia right now, mate. I can't do it. This guy's like, international. Is he a spy? My Awa is, he's always landing and taking off every time I talk to him. But he listens to the podcast on Apple faithfully, like I without fail. Awa. So shout out to Awa. And shout out to everybody, man. I don't want to just like, just because he gave $20, uh, we don't appreciate it. people that get 5 or 10 We appreciate all of you guys. But the equally. shout outs are real. The shout outs are real. And that wasn't even planned. He didn't pay for that. That's just like, man, we appreciate the love because we cannot do it without y'all. I cannot stress that enough. So 
Shout out to you guys so much. Definitely appreciate it. I also respect anybody who can just buy stuff from anthropology. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been in there once and I was so scared. Like as soon as the first the first like white person came up to me, like, can I help you? I just ran out. <laughs> <laughs> they got what? stuff that you don't need. They have literally a phone book made out of like old newspaper. Mm -hmm. I'm not a phone book, a phone, an old rotary phone made out of old, like old newspaper print. Okay. <laughs> that does not work. It's just a piece of art. Hmm. But it's heavy, like a real phone, but does not work as a phone. Uh, I believe that. Yeah. I, now that I think about it, when I was in there, I saw a wheelbarrow. And I thought it was just part of the decor, but it had a price tag on it. So I was like, what? Who's coming in here and leaving? Like, this living room needs something by the chase. A wheelbarrow. So what can I put all these potatoes in? <laughs> and the, thing, the wheelbarrow anthropology was probably like $2,000. You could go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get it for like a hundred. Farmers <laughs> looking at it online like, that's bullshit. That is bullshit. Barbara, <laughs> come here and take a look at this shit. <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> get William out of the meal and tell him to come take the gander at this. <laughs> Maxine, Eugene. Jethro, <laughs> stop plowing those horses. Come on in here and take a look at this. They be getting, no, it's the same thing with Urban Outfitters, though. Urban Outfitters be trying to sell you a rock and call it... Uh, a classic paperweight. That's the easiest way to make, like, take advantage of like city people is to get something and call it rustic. Yeah. And it's just like a piece, a big piece of like sheet metal, and they're just like four thousand dollars, and you're just like, ooh, look oh, at I us. Need, I never knew I needed that. We're on the absolutely. countryside. <laughs> what have you bought that you absolutely did not need? Ah, uh, most things. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tell you about my last e eBay purchase. Um, and I did an unboxing because when I got it, I was like, this is Perfect. so random. I got a great eBay one right after this. Perfect. Okay, so the first, I got two boxes, right? The first box, and my, I did it on live, so people had no idea what I was doing. The first, live, the first box had six to eight um, sand dollars. <laughs> sand dollars? You never seen a sand dollar? No, what is a, what is a sand dollar? Um, I'll show you. It's actually, they're like a... Uh, the things that you find on the beach oh my God. Um, that look like currency, like this. It used to be an animal. It's like a fossil. Oh, my God. But white people, I don't know, they trade them like Pokemon cards. <laughs> uh, so I got that. And what? then, um, here, you know what? I'm going to just get the... I'm gonna just get Are you going to get it? Yeah, it's right here. That's, uh, that's different. I never even know those were called sand dollars. I just called them shells because... Essentially, I thought that's what they were. So, oh, he, he's really got it. Okay, that was fast. All right, so here's the eBay box. Okay. So I'll give you a, a sneak peek. Here is a, here's one of the things. Okay. So it's just a bunch of these. These are sand dollars. Uh, wow. You no know, idea what I need those for. Here's the thing. I don't need those. As I'm touching it, I feel like this was made in somebody's kitchen. This literally feels like porcelain. Yeah, like handmade. Could be. I don't think anybody's like on the other end of that argument. Like, you ripped me off. I wanted yeah. a real sand dollar. <laughs> this, but it could be. I don't know. It definitely feels like it was just made in somebody's kitchen. Because like, I felt I like the, the, the ones that are, that the animals actually lived in, like have ridge, ridges along. You just found right out here. what this thing was. But I've seen them before. Oh, okay. I don't know, man. Well, you know, best of luck. How much was, how much was this? Like six. $8. Okay, all right. And then the other thing, which you might like, an old school cassette. Oh, now that's funky. With a mic. We should definitely walk around Hollywood and record people. Uh, it It's not working. <laughs> so here's the thing. I really wanted it to work, and then I bought it, and then the guy sent me a message. He's like, hey, by the way, I tested it on, with a tape. And it completely was destroyed. Wait. And I was like. So he, he sent this after you already purchased it? No, no, no. He sent a message. Okay. Saying, before I send it out, it's broken. And oh. I was like, can it be cheaper then? And he knocked like $30 off of it. Okay. How so much was that? It was only, it, he, he was selling it for 60 and I got it for 30 Okay. That's still not bad. I mean, it's, it's dope to have. Like, I got it for an, like a film aesthetic. Yeah, you know? it's very dope. But uh, yeah, it's made by Mayfair.
Okay. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I didn't, just in case you knew what that was. No. All right, so your most random eBay purchase. Most random unneeded eBay purchase was a couple weeks ago. And I talked about this, I think, on one of my lives. But uh, I'm an old school fan of cars. You know, I love Chevy Novas. I love metal cars with steel bumpers. I absolutely love it. Um, I was trying to buy a Nova because I've bought like four of them. I fix them up and I sell them. This oh. one I was going to try to keep. Uh, the black one? No, no, I'm, I'm getting to that one right there. That, that's not, that wasn't the Nova. So, uh, um, I was trying to buy this Nova. It's clean as hell. Damn, it was so clean. It was originally going for like $3,800. Okay. I was like, all right, cool. I'm prepared to go to $6,800 for this car, right? And it, it was originally what? 38 Okay. When the bid is started. Because most of the bidding gets done within the last three minutes of the eBay bid. Like, that's when people just be jumping on it. And you always set your limit, what you won't go past. Well, I just know in my mind. Okay. Right? So, um... It gets to the last 15 minutes, so I'm watching it. It gets to like the last five minutes. I bid $50. Cool. Somebody had already outbid me. I mm -hmm. can never bid high enough or fast enough to be the top bidder, right? And right. I was getting so frustrated because then I saw a bid and I right, $100, 100 $150, $300. Still never happened. This car ended up going for $9,700, and I was so pissed and so mad because I wanted it, but I also just wanted to be the top bidder. Just once, so like. So did you lose it? I lost it. I, okay. I was not. Good. I was not paying ninety seven hundred dollars for this okay. car. Okay. So fast forward a couple weeks, I uh, saw this clean Monte Carlo, a seventy seven. Uh, it was like uh, two thousand twenty five dollars, something okay. like that, the starting bid. And so I'm looking at it. I was like, oh, that's cool. I set a reminder for it. Uh, and then it got to like the last fifteen minutes, like a week later, and I was like, I'm gonna be the top bidder. For something, right? Because I know in 15 minutes, that's an eternity in eBay bidding. Right. So I was and where like, where was it at? It was at, it was still at $2,025, right? So I was like, cool. I know this is going to go for $6,000, so there's no fear in my heart. I ain't going to have to get this. So I just bid $25, $2,050. Boom, I'm good. Top bidder. Screenshot it. was like, oh. Oh, you just dropped 25 extra? Just $25. Because okay. I, didn't, I didn't really want the car. I was just, I just wanted to see you are the top bidder. <laughs> oh, you just wanted that. I wanted period. the title. That's all I fucking wanted, man. Fifteen so minutes sad. later, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Twenty minutes later, I get an email saying, "Congratulations on your win. Please pay the seller." And you added twenty five extra dollars, or just twenty five period? Just twenty five dollars period to two thousand and twenty five dollars. So I added the total was two thousand and fifty dollars. So in fifteen minutes, nobody, nobody, not one person bid on this. Video. And you low key didn't want the car. I did not expect to get this car. But you didn't want it. I didn't want it. I wasn't looking for it. But you were happy to have it. I am now. Oh, but you were just like, oh, I actually got to pick this I up. I actually got to pay for this shit. So I had to pay this guy $2,050 for this car. And it ended up being unnecessary. You don't I did not need this. It is so long. Because my, my Infiniti is a V8. Yeah. Uh, I got rid of my Focus, which was like a, a, a four liter engine. So it was good on gas. Uh -huh. I got rid of that. And now I have another V8. And this this Monte Carlo, it's a 77 Monte Carlo. It's clean. I already passed smog. It's registered everything. All black, burgundy interior. Um, it was actually a really great buy, and I'm probably just gonna put like twenty five hundred dollars in it, and then probably Ooh. end up selling it for like ten thousand, twelve thousand uh, dollars. But I was nice. not trying to buy this damn car. Yeah, man. That looks like it just disrespects that gas. Is, that's me. That that's that that verse two. Those are me. That black one right there. That's tight. Yeah, but it's clean on the inside, and it just man, that joint just. It, it, it glides, man. So, it just most unnecessary like purchase of 2019 was a 1977 Monte Carlo. That is a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> you done bought a car you didn't want. This just lo it looks like it doesn't care about gas it at all. It does not. In the first week, not even a full week, the first six days, I went to the gas station three times for this car. Jesus. It is maybe 12, 13 miles to the gallon. Oh my God, we're in LA. You can't do that. Do you have anything to do in the valley? Oh, you live in the valley. I live in the valley, so Whoa. I have not been leaving the valley <laughs> until I get this bike. Uh, I'm gonna get like a, <laughs> I'm gonna get an electric mopi, and I see it. But I've been I've been missing <laughs> shoot dates and everything. If it's not enough you know, money, radius. Me, oh you no, man. The radius. No, because the infinity only gets like 16 miles to the gallon, uh -huh. 18 on the highway, 18 20 on the highway. So. <laughs> And they actually finally use this premium. 12? Yes. Oof. Yeah. Oof. 12 to 14 miles to the gallon, I want to say. That's and nice. it takes 80 to fill up that one, and the other car takes 75 for premium. 
And gas right now in LA, for those that don't know, gas is at five dollars. Four oh nine. Between four oh nine and four fifteen for eighty seven. That's regular octane. Yep. You go up to premium, you're looking at four forty nine to four seventy nine, depending on where you're at in the city. It's, it's four thirty uh in the in the mid city now. Oh, Which I have this uh code that I can send you. Uh these people will come and fill up your car. At for ninety nine cents. Well, it has to be in a certain port. Uh, they they give you like where they're gonna be for that day. That they'll fill it up for ninety nine cent a gallon. The only what? downside is there's a four hour window. Of what? Of waiting because you don't know when they'll come within that four hours. It's like and they come to your house. Uh it's not. I don't know if or they come to your station. house. I, I think it's like just locations in the city. Uh huh. But it's four hours. That's, That's like, like some Robin Hood shit. Yeah, yeah. But ninety nine cents a gallon. I feel like it's not real gas. No, it's gas. It's, it, it has to be. But you they know how like you hear that shit like seventy six or like Shell, like these different things are. Co- I don't know who was accused of it, but they're accused of like mixing it with water. Ah, uh, well, I think I think what they can do because they're they're probably getting it wholesale, and because they have specific customers, it's mm-hmm. all profit for them versus yeah. like a gas station being open twenty four hours and probably from one a.m. to. 5 a.m. They might only move, I don't know, maybe three hundred dollars of gas. Hmm. But this is like everything's getting sold because you you reach out, I guess, the day before and they tell you where they're gonna be at. And oh, and just the, business model, yeah, okay. business model of it. Because cool. I've heard of this before, like this truck going around because there are companies that do it. Mm-hmm. They fill up their employee, not fill it up, but they have this contract with this company. Yeah, and they go around, they fill up your thing. You just have to leave your gas thing open, and then they they fill up your tank. I'm into it. Yeah, I'm going to try it on both of the cars. Um, before we go, I just want to let you guys know that there was a uh, there was a really big spider over here that was moving really fast. And when I got the napkin, it disappeared. So I know you guys know. I know y'all know that feeling. <laughs> Yo, the spider was moving so damn fast. The spider was like, you know, an action movie is like, all right. On three, we're going to flank left and make our way to the ship. (laughs) He was was all frantic. (laughs) He was hella frantic. And now it's just like, jeez, I hate that feeling. Patrick was looking for a spider. He put his hands in. Well, don't see it. (laughs) When spiders get away, it feels like somebody's in your house or something. It feels like they opened up the door, the spider door, for all the rest of the spiders to come in. So now you're just going to wake up. They're just going to be on the couch to smoke cigarettes and drink a Hennessy. (laughs) Oh, they're black spiders. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you knew that I, I feel like black people are the only people Only race keeping cognacs Like Hennessy in business I don't see anybody else on Hennessy You like really, Latinos, really don't maybe, but Like when I go to a club and I see Hennessy On the shelf, I'll be like, oh Black people, they come here or they got a black night Oh really? It's that? It's like that? I've never seen a white guy order A Hennessy on the rocks That's or a Hennessy so net true. Damn but it was made by a whole bunch of white people. That's what's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's cognac, <laughs> they man. had no idea. But it's crazy because French connections, which are made with <laughs> Hennessy and Grand Moyer, are typically drinking by older black and white men. French connection? French connection. And it's that's a drink. Hennessy and what? It's Hennessy and Grand Moyer. And it's delicious. What's Grand Moyer? Grand Moyer is like an orange liqueur. It's orange Hennessy? No, no, it's like an orange liqueur. So it's like a sweet uh, liquor. Like anything that's like a sweet liquor that's not like I guess of a certain proof like uh, Bailey's would be considered a liqueur. So it's then, like a oh, liqueur. it's so liqueur is something that's not as high of a proof. I think so, and just sweeter too. So, so what this drink you're talking about is like an orangey Hennessy. Yeah, it's like a hint of the orange. There are other liqueurs that are that give you more of the citrus flavor. So is it like a Hennessy old fashioned? Somewhat. Somewhat. Kind of the same vibe. Yeah, kind of the same vibe. I though. like old fashions. Yeah, man. Just, it just I like the me. French Connection. It is delicious. I'm gonna try that next. A lot time. of calories, though. All right, so let's get into some weird stories. I have a quick question, though. Yes. Have you ever had a pet? Yes, we have one now. It's a dog. I fucking hate it. Have you ever had a pet you loved? Mm, not a pet guy. Not really a pet guy. Really? Not at all. I feel like pets are worse than kids because. Damn. Like, well, I mean, cats are not as bad because you can leave a cat. Over a couple of days, as long as they got food and water, they'll be straight. Mm-hmm. But a dog, you got to, like, find somebody to watch your dog or put him in a kennel. Mm-hmm. Dogs, like, for them to be man's best friend, they're pretty fucking handicapped. Like, hmm. they can't do anything on themselves. Like, at least cats, 
they like poop and they bury their own poop and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, but you got to walk a dog every day, morning and night. Sometimes, mm-hmm. like, if you don't go poop on that second time, you got to take them back out before you go to bed. They're going to wake up with a surprise in the living room floor. <laughs> so, like, dogs, are, man, like, they're fucking lazy, bro. Like, they add no, like, dogs. at least kids get old enough to a point where they can start wiping their own ass. But dogs, man, they just, be, they just cost money and time and energy. <laughs> this Fuck my... these pets, man. <laughs> Fuck these pets. That hashtag won't catch on. I bet it will. Because no fuck these way. kids, dude. People... Yeah, but white people can make fun of their kids. They cannot disrespect nah. the pet. Yes, you, you can. Not and I people. will. Fuck your dog. <laughs> this reminds me of when I asked you, what, like, what was your AM name? <laughs> and you were like, young to hear more nine to five job. It was just like, <laughs> you didn't have any weird name? No, I didn't really. I wasn't on AIM like that. I wasn't, man. My <laughs> first email, my very first email was literally just my name and an underscore. How old were you? College. Oh, okay. Well, that's why. Yeah. Okay. That's that's definitely why. I was thinking of like middle school, crazy aim name, like how girls would be like, I'm Roxy Surfer Girl and shit like but that. But even on MySpace, my name was just my name. I was never one of the ones like Five Star General, T. Dot, <laughs> like none of that. The wildest thing I did was in my first car. Uh, my last name is Moore, obviously. I got my license plate to say M. Dot. That was the wildest thing I did as wow. far as name goes. I think that the best part about having those wild names is like having to explain it in mm-hmm. a professional or spell it out in a professional situation. Like I was at the studio the other day with my homie. He's a rapper. His name's Fat Brand. And uh, was, we finished the track and I'm like, what's your email? He was like, Fat Brand. And I was typing it. He was like, ain't no lick. And I was just like, bro, we were he said it super straight face, bro. Like, fat brand ain't no lick. And I was just like, niggas is wild as hell. Um, That's why I've never <laughs> wanted to do it. Because, like... <laughs> I've had to do that over the phone to Apple and shit. Oh, my God. This dude on Instagram... I mean, not Instagram. Facebook. And I'm just going to give a name similar to him so y'all don't go look him up. But this chick had passed who I went to high school with. Mm-hmm. And he posted something about it. And everybody was like, oh, my God, what happened? And every update, because I um, I typed in rest in peace, but you know, once you type, you get every update from that. Mm-hmm. So every t- update, it was on my phone, like, these bitches can't handle all 12 inches of this dick, Brandon said. Like, every update, that is, that's like, bro. Rest in peace, dog. It's yeah. like, that doesn't feel the same after you had to read <laughs> your screen name. These bitches can't take all 12 inches of this dick, Lee. Oh, that was a real one. I mean, like that was that was that was the name was very similar to that. Wow. And I was just like, fam, how are you sharing this are you, on Facebook? Is your family on Facebook? Like, Sentimental. Your kid try to add you? Be like, yeah, this is my dad right here. Just, just find eight. These <laughs> bitches can't handle all twelve inches of this dick, Williams. Also twelve. Good for you, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> but is it though? I, it, I mean, I'm sure it's cat, but I mean, here's the thing. But this is my thing. I just thought about this earlier this week. I was like. You know, having a big dick, like, all right, so having average dick is, is average, right? And having above average is, is pretty good. I'm okay with above average. I'm okay with above average. But yeah, having a go. huge elephant trunk dick, right? Okay, it looks cool to brag on it, but, like, most chicks, unless she's doing porn, they don't want 14 inches of Sprite can with dick inside of them. I always thought that um, if you go to the South, they do. <laughs> I mean, they might try it. I feel like everything's bigger in the South, so <laughs> pussies included. <laughs> and I feel, thing, like, I feel like Meg the Stallion wants like a overly, like way too much. What if she does all that talking, but like she's the most conservative chick like in the super, bedroom? No, there's no way. The <laughs> lyrics are just like so in your face. She just watched like, a lot of porn. She just saw a lot of stuff. She but went on a test that. the rapper song and talked about licking the balls. So I think she's... 13 inches from the... Base. Opening of the canal to like here. That's like 13? that's that's you know, it's probably more closer to here. That's you damn near. See, I mean, you almost you damn you damn near like kissing the rib cage with the penis. Like that's basically right. what that's you're graphic. doing. And then then the flip side of that is once you get like 40, 50 and those directions start slowing down, you just mm-hmm. walking around with a limp elephant trunk. That's the kind of old nigga I want to be though. <laughs> If it don't work, I just want to be the dude open row. Patrick, what are you doing? Get get back to your room, huh? And my just like, <laughs> 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 just 
like a pendulum. <laughs> just like, what do you want? <laughs> what? Huh? What you you want Jello? Damn yes. <laughs> Green Jello, please. Just. Oh shit! He got his dick out again. <laughs> but then, like, if there's any young people there, they'd be like, I mean, damn, old boys who is that? I mean, that is pretty wild. You got a, oh, a baby man. swinging from there. I want to tell you about this experience I had yesterday, but I was gonna save it for the stage. But fuck it, we here now. Um, went to Massage Envy yesterday. I okay. made an appointment. I was like, yo, I'm kind of tense. I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out. Um. Called in, they was like, yeah, we got a 4.30 for you. I'm like, cool. They were like, you want to be with Jill? Perfect. Sounds good. Get there. Jill is actually Jill Burt. Who's that? It's a guy. It's a 6'2", 250-pound Armenian guy. And his name is Jill Burt? Jill Burt. There's one name, Jill Burt. The chick on the phone Jill? said Jill. It was Jill Burt. Like Gilbert with the J. But she called him Jill. Yep. And what was the context of the meetup? Uh, it was massage envy. I'm, I'm getting a massage. Yep. So Armenian man, and for those that don't know, Armenians are, hairy. They, they are very hairy. They're, you know, very hairy Gilbert. race. Um, was it on his shirt? No, they, he's just like, hey, how you doing? I'm Gilbert. And immediately I was like, fuck no. Like, right? Like, not even like on a level of like gay, but mm -hmm. on a level like, I just don't want another man. He had really big hands touching me. And all the stuff that was going through my mind, it's I was just like, like harder. Yeah, I thought it might be like too. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. But man. you know how much I'm, yeah, they're like yeah. harder. Yeah. More pressure. You're so like, oh, let me gosh. tell you everything. I, I immediately wanted to say no, but I'm like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? It's a massage. He's a professional. Let's just go ahead and knock it out, right? First things first. He had just had like uh, I guess a Reese's peanut butter cup. I hate Reese's peanut butter cup. Wow. It was all on the breath. As soon as he that's like shook his hand, I was like, that, that is unprofessional. That's gonna be in the room. That's gonna that's gonna fill up the whole can we, everything. Can we pause and just say notice the fact that he didn't say his breath smelled like peanut butter <laughs> to hear new. I know exactly what it was. I knew <laughs> it was exactly because if it was just peanut butter, <laughs> it would have a different scent. But when it's a Reese's, it's like you, you get the chocolate and the peanut butter. I was like, what the hell? I hate right. Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> so he smelled bad. He Continue. smelled like Reese's peanut butter cups. That's number one. <laughs> number two was he was a mouth breather. So like it wasn't like that's enough to like the, yeah it's just like, right and it sounded like he was working through like some acid uh, reflex because he kept doing like <clears throat> so it was a lot of grunting while he's massaging me, which was very uncomfortable. Uh, but aside of that, I still saw it through because I'm like. At the very least, this will be great material, right? As a comic, a lot of times I find myself in wow. fucked up situations. And I just but like you go through it. I'm gonna that? see it through because you never know what might be gold, right? So wow. I said the Armenians are heavy. Like this is some people might consider this a lot of hair. This would be an Armenian arm balding. This mm -hmm. would be thinning. Their hair is like this on the arm. So like as he's like working my back like this, you hear the I feel every hair follicle. On my back from his arm. It wasn't no Everyone. oil? Yes. He was very oil heavy. He was so oil heavy, I thought something else was going on. It was like, because knowing they like on the hand and they do it like this. Now he was like all on my back with it. He just then on my hand. Wouldn't that, won't you only hear, feel the uh, hairs if it's dry? No. Not when it's a lot, bro. Yeah. So it was like lot. wet hair? I, I mean, it's oily hair. You feel, and it was stiff, dog. Like, I was just, uh, yeah, so imagine this. Mm. Oh, is mm. that bad? Mm. Mm. That's him. Uh, That's him grunting while he's massaging my back. And I'm going to tell you something. This is how I know I was uncomfortable. I fall asleep every massage. Every massage I fall asleep. He was just... I was wide the fuck awake this time. Because I was like, bro, no, man. It sounds like some jail shit. It did. It, it felt like... And I and as, as I'm getting it, I'm like, I could never go to jail, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hell, I'm thick as fuck. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I'm thick as fuck. Don't I mean, I'm losing that. weight now, but I'm thick as fuck. Oh I can't goodness. never go to jail. I got my mother's hips, nigga. I got childbearing <laughs> hips. I ain't going to jail. I got long hair. Yeah, <laughs> I got something to hold on to. I'm, that's what I'm scared. They go. If no, 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 for real. If I get any type of charge where they put like two days, three days in jail, my shit's bald. <laughs> I don't want that. You try to run away and nigga, nigga grab a handful. 
Nigga hit me with the pool bag. It's like, nigga, I'm already getting butt raped. <laughs> so, don't pull my hair. Don't grab my hair, please. I, I was like, I'm not going to sleep, man. This, I'm already, it just it draws. I'm just. I'm already at second base. This nigga go try to clear the Gilbert bases. Too. The Gilbert. fact that his name was Gilbert, I feel like at that point, when you were like, okay, this will be a joke. <laughs> man, a it joke. was not a joke. And he was like, all right, I'm going to get ready to do your legs. I was like, actually, you just do my calves. And my feet. I don't really need nothing else. I he was just like, kept it to shoulders. He was like, you don't want to turn over and do your thighs? I was like, no. No, I don't. Because I don't want to lock eyes with you accidentally mm-hmm. while you massage. That changes things. Mm-hmm. You just lock eyes with somebody just right here with the oil. Oh, it's a thing now. It's a thing. We go together. We're going mm-hmm. steady at this point right now. Yeah, I got to ask your birthday, your favorite color at that yeah, point. Put them on Facebook. Yeah. Change your really And it system. hurt. I'm not going to lie to you. It hurt. Like, oh, it was supposed to be deep tissue, but it, it was deep soul. That was... <laughs> He was that like, was the silver lining I was gonna ask. But did you at least get like? That's what I out? thought. I thought that I, you know, because that's that's really where I how I rationalize it. I'm like, I right, because he is a guy, he might be able to get like I had a lot of knots in my back. I'm always tense, so I'm like, he might be able to get that out. But he wasn't doing it like like a massage therapist would. Like you find a knot, you try to work it out with your arm. That's not working. You work the elbow. That's not working. Then you try to with your palm. He just was all arm. It just stayed on that point, and it hurt so and did bad. Did he get nothing out? Huh? It didn't. It didn't leave, bro. But I couldn't. Like it. It hurt bad enough for that single tear to come out. Like if you hit your elbow wow. or your toe, it hurt that bad. Wow. But I couldn't let him see that it hurt that bad. So I just was like dying on wow. the inside. Like, hmm. That's just hilarious. swallowing. <laughs> just, oh, oh. The fact that he still didn't get. Although I will say, there's no one stronger than a small Korean woman with a mas, with like a masseuse. License. Yeah, they got a different type of strength. They are. I would like, yo, is that the same? I I I have a theory that they're like, okay, put down, put your head down, and then a whole nigga comes in <laughs> when you're doing it, you can, and then they're like, real quick, you turn around, and it's like them again, like, okay, it's such a hard pressure, medium pressure. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I always try. I try to stay awake, but I always fall asleep, and I'd be so mad at myself because I'm like, I know if I'm falling asleep. I'm Good sleep, I'm a snore. And I feel like if they hear me snoring, they be like, ah, I gotta do shit for the next 30 minutes. Damn, that's true. And then once I stop, they just come right back in with it, like, hey, that's good? That's, that's good. <laughs> you awake now? For 30 minutes, they just on their phone playing Candy Crush. <laughs> wow, wow, I'm thinking I'm getting the kinks worked out. <laughs> that's a that's a crazy, that's a crazy question though. Because yeah. like, what is the what is the thing with the male? masseuse because that happened to me just once and it was nowhere near as crazy as that mm. it was a little asian dude but they were just like we're out of masseuses the only one we have is is, is a male is that okay and like that whole thing i didn't want to be like no i don't got no you know what yeah, I mean? I yeah, wanna you don't want to be that up. person and it's just like i mean it's not i guess it's not that weird so it happened but, and he didn't make no noise but it was just like just the 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 thought of like a sensual thing and it's yeah. just like you look up like you okay dog like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is it, it's, i don't think it's like i don't I don't want to attest it to homophobia. It's just you're not used to not familiar with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've I've hung out in gay clubs. Um I hung out in West Hollywood and kicked it. They got the best drink prices. I'm not gonna hold you. They at all. Have fun. They, they know how to have, they know how bro, to have fun. They kick it like a motherfucker, dog. All, and it's usually no fun. bullshit happening. Usually no bullshit happening. So I'm all for that. But it was just different. And then there's also, I think, also as a man, it was the the thought, like, I'm the type of guy when I walk into a room, I size up everybody just like to think, who could I take if some shit like came down? Like, who who I can handle, like, on some, on some scruffle type shit. Mm-hmm. And he was a big dude. I didn't know if I could handle uh, it. So, Gil- Gilbert. Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert was a big dude. So, like, if some shit broke down, I was like, that name. like, yeah, like, I, I didn't like know if, if I, I could. Had... Yeah, if I had, if we had to squabble. Y'all like, had a disagreement on the masseuse table? Yeah, and then nigga just grabbed me by my neck. And I'm like, fuck off of me, Gilbert. Like every month, it wouldn't be much like unless I could turn my head and like he might say some shit. Oh, like oh, black guys <laughs> fucking stink. I'm like whoa, whoa, wait the fuck, Neo. My- wait a minute, man. Let me look at you. <laughs> he got mad because he wouldn't turn around. Yeah. Oh, you don't want a thigh massage? <laughs> Let me do my job. Are you choking me? I'm like I'm tired. I'm tired. So it's like having somebody that is bigger than me, like rub me, was intimidating for uh-huh. me because like I. Th- you know what I've had? I've had an Asian guy do it too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had, but I'm typically used to women doing it, not just like on the sexual side, but it's just like, like I get a lot of time massages and like, you know, they stand on your back with it. Like yeah. they hold the, the ceiling and they stand on your back. So I'm just used to that. So and anything out of enormous is going to make you 
more heightened and, and, and uber sensitive uh-huh. and, or not sensitive but like just more aware the Asian men in the masseuse, like massage parlors are also small. Yeah. So I, they, they're like damn near the same. Like I've never seen like a giant Asian dude in the mm-hmm. massage parlor. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. It, it just doesn't happen. But you know, fun story, man. <laughs> Try it tonight on stage and see, just see what happens. You know what's funny? Since you said uh, gay people know how to have fun, mm-hmm. I just thought about it. I'm. Have you ever seen like a bored gay dude? <laughs> have you ever seen like a gay dude like? Oh, I'm bored. Like, what is there to do today? <laughs> They're always having fun or about to have fun. Or, or just doing something, not working. They're very productive. They're very fun people. I like it. <laughs> All right, so, well, full circle back to did you ever have a pet? <laughs> um, <laughs> full circle. So, this is weird as hell. A Norwegian teen um, had her horse put down when she was sick and then kept fillets of it. And... Uh, she says it was like delicious and now she's getting backlash for eating her own horse uh it says that you know it was it was put down and um now she's she's eating it and getting death threats what would make you want to eat horse like i just can't imagine horse being oh god good yeah it's, right it, you would think it's so gamey because it's like all muscle, uh-huh. so it doesn't seem like it would ever be tender. Like, and if you love somebody, why would you? That's eat the them? biggest thing. Like, you had like you pet it, you <laughs> laughed with it, <laughs> fucking rode it, did whatever. I don't know what horse people with horses do, but then you eat. Like, you're just like actively and knowingly eating this thing that was your friend is crazy. That is nuts. And here's the fucked up part. I didn't know about this till just now. Her name's Pia Olden. Uh, she's 18. She actually um, shared how she ate the horse meat prepared with chili and mango. She dropped a recipe, bro. Yo, somebody needs to check on her grandparents because if she'll eat the horse. <laughs> she's having grandma tea and grandma finger bites. Like, that is... Who does that? It's so much stuff oh, in the world to eat. Why would you ever turn meat. to your pet, which is a horse? <laughs> and it was sick. It was put down. Like... That's crazy. And here's the fucked up part. She did a split screen with the meat. <laughs> she split screened the meat and her horse. That Loki looks like a fire ass steak, though. I ain't gonna hold you. No. But, but no. No. But, but no. But maybe with some AWOL sauce. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, I just would God. never eat horse. Like when I was in uh, South Korea, weird. like they had, they were selling dog on the street. Like they have dog farms where they. Like they, they were saying it was dog too. No, no, it is. Like our guy told us, like, or they have chicken, beef, and they have dog as well. Like it's. Oh, it's, so they're not trying to pass it off as something. No, else. no, no, no. Yeah, you know it. I forgot the name for it, but they like yeah, that's the that active thing. So over there, yeah, I guess this story is just no. I would no. Nah, I'm cool, fam. There's other stuff to eat, my boy. Wow. So I over there, they're probably this story probably over there is just like oh, that makes sense. No, she's getting death threats. <laughs> she, she, this is in the states though. Oh, no, Norwegian, Norwegian. Okay. She was Norwegian, but you know, Facebook is everywhere. But yeah. I'm assuming, like, it's because she went extra with it. She posts she post the recipe. She posts literally a... Putting the picture of the screen. horse next to the meat is what makes really... Makes it real. That's what makes it real. That that's like putting the, the face on the package of hamburger that you're about to buy or something like that. Like, right? that makes it like, too real. Like, this is real. the actual cow you're about Nobody to eat. Nobody wants that like, part Ooh. right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's, she, she was bragging about it. She said it was the best meat she's ever eaten. Um, would you try it? If it was my horse, no. No, but just, would you try a horse, though? Uh, no. <laughs> also, a, a Norwegian girl named Pia, not seasoning it. Like, she's not cooking that shit fire. I don't care how good she thinks it was. Uh, <laughs> you saw the recipe, it could be fire. Nah, she said it was the best meat we have eaten, which means her Norwegian white family. But I, oh, if, if she ever came over here and had some Popeyes, that oh. probably would change. Yes. <laughs> um, speaking of well-seasoned chicken, um, oh. <laughs> do you hear this story? There was a Chick-fil-A employee who went down a storm drain to get a woman's phone. And he photographed himself poking out the sewer with a smile on the most Chick-fil-A story ever. At this point, I think that they are just like, they're going above and beyond. But this, this, I don't know if this is staged or not. Like, it doesn't seem like it. They how do you even get, churches. like, 
That that storm drain is heavy as hell without a crowbar. How do you even get that up? This guy too. Yeah, like he doesn't look like he possesses a lot of upper body strength. I'm just gonna be 100 percent honest with you. Did you hear about the one, the guy that hopped through the window to go ch- save the choking baby? Yeah. It's like, who are these people? Yeah, I'm saying they recruit from like churches, the military, <laughs> Mormons. They get like the best of the Doctors best. Doctors beyond borders. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Because he wasn't even, here's the other thing, he wasn't even on the clock. It says, Shauna Hall visited the, the restaurant in Stafford, Virginia. And as she was getting her son out of the car, she dropped her iPhone into a storm drain, which is, well, I guess that's doable. Um, and then I guess she uh, goes on to say the phone was just recently paid off no more than two days ago and she, she had just bought a new otter box for it. So just to add to the story, you know, there's a lot of a lot devil of is in details. The devil is in details. <laughs> so after a moment of freak losing my mind, I lay on the ground placing my head best where I can uh, see between my van and the drain looking into the dark abyss. Okay, what was this, an author? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we get it, Sean. You're descriptive. <laughs> Uh, she said, the manager comes over to talk to me and is very friendly but unsure how to help. Just then another employee behind her says he's going to grab a grab stick and a mirror and try to help. Once they're outside, the employee, whose name is Seth, gets down on the ground in an attempt to retrieve the uh, phone but has no luck. Um, she's really mapping this out in a story. He, 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 got, the, he got the phone back. Yeah. <laughs> she's like trying to make it a beginning, and end, a middle, and an end. Uh, but she, uh, she, I guess he called the county, didn't get, um, they hung up on him. Uh, they tried everything. Um, but then he saw a manhole cover over the drain and noticed that it's not bolted shut. Uh, Seth cuts his finger trying to lift it. And, um, after cleaning the wound. Oh, snap the spider. Oh, I saw it. He's on the paper towels. Oh, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going. Murder him. Oh, he's on the wall again. Where, 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 where? Over there by the tape. Kill this nigga. Oh, he's right behind the tape dispenser. Okay. Did I get it? Oh, oh snap. he saw him jump up. Oh, this nigga can jump! I told you he was a jumping guy. Ah. Oh, now he's gone oh, again! Oh, oh, yeah. Did he die? No! Oh. Oh. oh, he's on that side! He's on that side! Give it, pass it! Where is he? Under that shit. Under here? Oh, shit. Oh, he's coming for the one on one thing. Oh, he's coming back. He wants revenge. He wants, he wants all the smoke. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh god. I gotta burn the house down. <laughs> I gotta burn the whole house down. Oh no. Why are there so many papers over here? Oh fuck. Damn, he got in the cut cut. And for my mentality, I'm going to say he died under the pressure. <laughs> oh, he's going to pop out right here. Fuck it. All right, you just have to keep an eye on That was intense. That was the, just the bolt. That I he's needed. so fast. <laughs> he's so fast. I'm pretty sure he's a running back. Like, <laughs> the way, Hopefully there's no spider enthusiasts the way, watching. The way he switched directions, yo... He was also different stuff, my boy. I saw him in the corner of Yeah, on that paper That's how towel. Fast that nigga is. <laughs> he was like <laughs> All right. Cool. Woo. Okay. Yeah. So uh <laughs> He uh <laughs> He climbed down and dug the phone out. Which was miraculously not broken or wet. <laughs> so the nigga got the phone back. Shout out to Otterbox for uh, I know, right? Live, right? That needs to be a commercial. Oh man. I know you're here! I know you're here! Come out and face me! That's how white people talk to ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just leaving. <laughs> you like that? Uh, this is my house. <laughs> goes be like, I'm gonna kill this bitch. So <laughs> I'm gonna possess her dog and start walking on the hind legs all around the house. All right, um, well, <laughs> this brings us to the final segment. Oh my goodness, the conspiracy corner. Ah, uh, uh, here we uh, go. Uh, uh, uh. Cue the conspiracy music. 
Yes. <laughs> Has a time box that I think is used in sci-fi movies and it is used in time travel and going to alternate dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> I, it up. I was like falling downstairs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, today's uh, today's loveliness is brought to you by Nick Hinton, who's mm. actually blowing up on Twitter um, because of the story. Because he he posts these cool. Um, conspiracy threads on mm-hmm. his page and that's a uh, that's where i i uh get a lot of the stuff um but yeah this one is about a saturn time cube okay. and he posted this uh not too long ago uh wait where is it okay here it goes oh no it's hollow earth hollow earth is a good one too mm-hmm. um here it mm-hmm. goes all right so the saturn time cube uh basically all over the world across different cultures and religions um, and even throughout pop culture, like films, literature, and everything, for some reason, there's a consistent theme, um, and everybody's obsessed with a cube. So uh, it's part of the Jewish religious religion, the Muslim religion, the Masonic traditions. Uh, it can be seen in places like the UN Meditation Room, uh, Mecca, the 9/11 Memorial, and art installations everywhere. So just to give you, like, you know, just like the the shit on mm. in Mecca. For some reason, um, all cultures are obsessed with the cube. Um, it's been a central plot device in films like Cube, uh, Escape Room, Transformers, The Avengers, Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just kidding about the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Ice Cube. Uh, I believe that the cube, uh, this is Nick, I believe the cube it represents physical reality. Um, so we'll, we'll get to it, it's pretty complex. Um, but to Earth, then let us assign, this is what Plato said, To Earth, then, let us assign the cubic form, for Earth is the most immovable of the four and the most plastic of all bodies. Um, So, basically, um, with that said, Plato and the ancient uh, philosophers believed that this world was a counterfeit created by an ignorant and flawed god known as Demirge, uh, or Demirge, Demirge. Uh, they believe that he trapped our spirits in this false reality and it's up to us to free ourselves from it using secret knowledge. Um, if we don't succeed in doing so, we would be forced to reincarnate and start again from scratch. Um, and ancient Buddhists and Hindus believe something along the same lines, uh, but instead they called the material world Maya or illusion and the cycle of reincarnation Samsara. So basically we were made by a flawed god in a, mm-hmm. like a counterfeit world. Um, <clears throat> there is now a newer theory out there that echoes the same things. It's like a simulation theory. So mm-hmm. scientists and philosophers alike are, are claiming we might not be living. We might be living in a giant computer or virtual reality. Uh, movies like The Matrix, The Thirteenth Floor, they illustrate this uh, pretty well. And um, even though it's been around forever, the theory is getting more traction lately um, because of new information that we've we've had. So. Um, So basically, people believe that this cube represents this simulation and believe this simulation or false reality is taking place in a giant quantum computer. Um, And quantum computers that we're making now is actually shaped like giant black cubes. If you don't know what quantum computers are, it's actually fucked up. Um, Scientists figured out a way to smash atoms at the speed of light, um, which kind of goes into time travel. If, If something is going moving at the speed of light the world around them kind of changes so it's pretty complex that's a whole different thing but qu- these there's these things called quantum computers that can essentially you know how regular computers are bit like zeros and ones mm-hmm. this is zero one and the possibility of both so it literally taps into alternate uh realities to process information this is something that scientists are actually doing right now um, so these machines are claimed to be capable of, oh, this is right here. Uh, these machines are claimed to be capable of reaching into parallel universes to pull out information and find solutions to problems faster than regular computers. Uh, only a few have access, Google, CERN, and NASA, which is kind of scary. Uh, CERN is home to the world's largest particle collider and also the birthplace of the internet. Uh, many conspiracy theories claim CERN is trying to open a portal to another dimension, uh, but this isn't very far fetched because scientists who even worked here said that this happened. Yo, this is <laughs> Avengers and Matrix waiting to happen. Right, exactly, it man. It's scary as hell. So weird as hell. 
And I always feel like, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I believe all of it, but I definitely believe like there's something to deja vu. Like, you think that's lo us looking into something else for a quick second? Well, I don't know if it's that or us, us being here before or like the Matrix. On the Matrix, it was like, this is the sixth time the Matrix has restarted or something like that. So, it, was so a glitch. it could be a glitch. It could be, I don't know, man. But like, that's crazy. I cannot explain. No one can explain deja vu for the life of me. And if y'all can reach an alternate universes and alternate realities why the fuck don't we have a cure for the common cold right we're over here playing with dimension portals yeah i'm sick of this shit what's super scary is that um sergio bertolucci who is the director for research and scientific computing at cern even said he was quoted as saying out of this door might come something or we might send something through it i don't like that at yeah all. there's a lot of stuff i don't understand man like, a lot of that, I would have to read slowly, and I might need some flash cards to understand everything. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff they're, I don't understand. They're basically doing shit with science, quantum physics, kind of like uh, um, Ant-Man. Yeah. They're doing stuff with quantum f physics that can potentially open up something that can either affect the past or the future or can bring pe things from alternate universes to us. And uh, as added uh, evidence in front of the CERN facility is a sh uh, statue of Shiva the Destroyer, that girl with the hands yeah. like that. And she's dancing her dance of destruction with a stargate around her. That, should, that shouldn't be in the front of any business. <laughs> yes. That shouldn't be good for sales or funding or anything. That should not be in the front of... Like, it's so much stuff we, have, we can do. How is it we still don't have the actual smell of new car smell? As we effort? have that? No, we don't. They have ones... It's, it's oh, almost it's like, like a cheap imitation? Yeah, all of them is like our version of. But there is no one... That smell is exactly like the new car smell. And I know people say, well, it's just the com combination of the 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 uh, the equipment, the seats, the the in, what is it, the interior, all of that. It's the combination of those smells that actually make the new smell. But I'm like, how the fuck can Lay's make some chips taste like chicken and waffles and <laughs> biscuits and gravy and we can't get the new car smell? Have you had any of those? Yeah. Are they Fire. Good? Biscuits and gravy is good? Fire. Oh and my God. What? What's chicken better? and waffles? I like the chicken and waffles. I'm going to get that today. They don't have them anymore because they only do it like while they're running that specific like run. Damn. Yeah, but it was fire. I'm doing some wild shit now like spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like how, do you, how can you capture that flavor in chips when we don't have the new car smell? That doesn't, that smell doesn't differ car to car? No. It's kind of the same in all New cars, so yeah, yeah. It's huh. the, the, supposedly, it's the combination of the materials gathered to make the vehicle. However, you can't do it in anything else. I want my shoes to smell like new car smell. That would be fire. The inside of them? That yeah. would be kind of that, that would, would be, be kind of fire. fire. Um, but yeah, quantum physics, time travel, that all shit's of that scary. shit. It's, it's, it's pretty scary. This, it says that the founder of uh, D-Wave compared literally compared his quantum computers to the altar of an alien god. Listen, if you go back and watch Matrix now, I guarantee you two things will happen. One, you're going to notice a lot of stuff you didn't notice in the beginning. Two, it's going to seem far more possible for it to happen. Like, in this day and age, you'd be like, man, this this could be real. This explains a lot. Right. It explains deja vu. It explains why we feel like we know people. It explains like why we feel like we can't get over certain humps, like certain things, like why we can't ever like plug in your <laughs> your charger in the wall on the first try, mm -hmm. or why you can't ever use the USB on the first try, like why it always takes you to flip. Like like how does the universe work that much against me? Well, you might not even be in the right universe, cuz. Damn. Like, no, no. So when shit goes wrong, you're just like, damn, I'm in the wrong universe. The fucking Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> this blew your mind real quick. I mean, this, this theory is deep. It goes into like the reason why it's a Q is because NASA, NASA found like a hexagonal storm that if, at the North Pole of Saturn, which if you drew lines on it, it made like a literal cube. And then it goes into uh, the story of Kronos and who, who um, is like the god of war, but is related to Saturn. And then it, it, like, it ties in with Satan and all of this that's, wild, that's, wild that's stuff. That's a lot. But it's a, it's, a, it's a rabbit hole. Get into this Saturn time cube. We, none of this might be real. That would be sucky to think about. Like if you played it by the book the whole your whole life. You oh, right. It. 
And then like, you gotta find out that this is fake. He was like, You're in a computer game. Nigga, I could have jumped off. You didn't eat pork? Oh. <laughs> you didn't fuck until you were married. Wait, wait, wait. You never went raw? Oh, man. Ugh. I mean, I could restart your game. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. You just won't remember. Uh, <laughs> well, this has been another episode of Damn internet you scary i hope i didn't freak you out uh i mean nothing I'm matters fucked up. i need a drink nothing, nothing matters yeah that's kind of weird nothing matters and we'll probably know within the next 20 years <laughs> um but uh have a good week yeah <laughs> we'll see y'all next time or we won't or we won't <laughs> no no seriously we hope we, we hope to see we'll you. see you. <laughs>